there is so much confusion about archiving in Outlook. Now, I think the reason is that there are three different ways to archive emails in Outlook. Each method has the word archive in it, but all are very different and have their advantages and disadvantages. So it's important to understand which method is the right one for you. And with all this free cloud storage, do you even need archiving at all? Let's find out. Before we dive into the technicalities of archiving in Outlook, let's first clarify what it's used for. In the old days, mail server space was expensive. So the solution was archiving, meaning to keep the mailbox small by moving out old emails to a separate data file or PSD file. Now you get 15 gigabytes of cloud storage, sometimes more, even with free email accounts. So why archive? Well, for me, it comes down to two main reasons. Number one, compliance and legal. Each country or industry has its own standards and regulations when it comes to data security and retention. Now, a lot of intellectual property is contained within emails and often during a tax audit or legal proceeding, you'll have to go to dig up those old emails. Proper archiving can help you with that. Number two, productivity. No one likes to waste time searching for stuff. Bloated mailboxes can slow things down. It's gonna get more difficult to find what you need. By archiving, you can still maintain access to old messages, but it's gonna keep your mailbox lean and make search much faster. So with that in mind, let's check out the different archiving options you have in Outlook. Number one, fake archiving. In Outlook 2016, Microsoft introduced the archive button. It's right next to the delete button on the home tab. I call it fake archiving because all it does is to move your message to a special folder called archive in your mailbox. Just like the delete button moves a message to the deleted items folder. So other than the convenience of this button, there is really nothing special about the archive folder because it's part of your mailbox. It's not gonna reduce the overall size of your mailbox. In that sense, it's not true archiving. But on the other hand, it has the advantage that all items in there are still available in Outlook for the web on your phone or any other device. So I generally use the archive button to clear out items from my inbox that I still wanna keep handy for some time. For items that I don't need anymore, I use delete, and I empty the deleted items at regular intervals. And instead of the buttons in the ribbons, you can also customize quick actions to quickly archive and delete. Or you use the keyboard shortcut backspace to archive and delete to well delete. Number two, auto archiving. This feature was introduced with Outlook 2003 and it was Microsoft's answer to sluggish Outlook performance when mailboxes got big. It runs in the background and automatically goes through all your mailbox folders. And it physically moves old emails out of these folders to a separate data file or PSD file on your local computer. So this is true archiving and it keeps your mailbox smaller. In Outlook, you'll see it as a separate group in the folder pane outside of your mailboxes called archives. And it maintains the folder structure when it moves the emails. So it's not just one big folder where all old emails are dumped into. When you open archives, you're gonna see folders like inbox or sent items, depending on where the messages were in before. But remember, the archives data file sits locally on your PC. So anything that's been moved there is not gonna be available to you on another computer or online. Now I admit setting up auto archiving in Outlook is not the most intuitive experience. But once you've got it set up the way you want, it's gonna work quietly in the background and it's gonna free up space for you. So if you have limited mail server space at home or at work, it's still the best way in Outlook to get rid of old items. Now, because it's important to get the settings right, I have a separate video that shows you how to properly set up auto archiving. Check it out if you want to give auto archiving a try. Number three, online archiving. The third method that we're gonna take a look at is online archiving or in-place archiving as it's also called. 
It's kind of a super powered auto archiving in the sense that it moves items out of your inbox, but it's cloud based. So it stores the old items in an archive on a server and not in a PSD file on your local computer. It's like a specialized mailbox next to your actual mail account. And because it's online, any items stored in there are available to you from your other computers as long as they're connected to the internet. Online archiving is Microsoft's newest form of archiving, and it was created to provide an enterprise-grade replacement for auto-archive. It requires an Exchange account, and it has certain Outlook license requirements. I'm going to put a link below to a Microsoft support page with more details. If you have online archiving or your Exchange administrator activated it for you, you're going to see it as a separate mailbox in Outlook. Based on your company's default retention policy, it's going to automatically move your old items there after a certain time while preserving the folder structure, just like with auto archiving. But you can also create your own rules in Outlook to move messages there or just manually drag email there. Or even migrate the content of your local PSD file to an online archive. So online archiving kind of combines the best features of fake archiving and auto archiving. This wraps up our overview about archiving in Outlook. If I get as many thumbs up for this video as I said the word archiving, I'm going to be happy. I hope this video was helpful. And if you'd like more Outlook tips, check out this video. Thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.